Good morning, Coda Baker. As we learn about velocity in the Flutter Flame game, we're going to experiment with different types of graphics to make our learning process more fun. Our character is from Overcrafted on Open Game Art. This tutorial will use the free platformer game tile set from Game Art 2D. However, the tutorial got a little bit complex because these tiles are 128 pixels. If you want to use the same tile set, you will need to change the tiles from 128 by 128 pixels to 32 by 32 pixels uh, manually. To be honest, I don't really know how to use tiled that well, so there might be an easier way to do this where I don't have to resize the tiles. If so, please leave a comment and help me out. Further on in the video, I do use something called Image Magic to batch resize all the tiles to 32 by 32 pixels. When you prototype your game or just for learning purposes, you can just take an entire image and use it as the background image. For example, using a sprite component. So let's take that step first. With this technique, you need to adjust each um, collidable object uh, individually. So it's only good for the background. And eventually we're gonna change it into using the map from tiled. However, just to see what the graphic looks like, we're gonna drop it in as a sprite component. The sprites are in a system of layers. So we're first gonna put it below the character and you'll see that it's gonna completely block out the character. The solution would just be to raise it up, but just so you understand how the layers component works, let's first put it below the character, Lena. The second size is the size of the game screen. We'll need to run flutter pub get because we've just added the background PNG file into the assets slash images folder. The background sprite component does appear. However, as previously mentioned, it is over the girl Lena. So let's put the background component above Lena so that when Lena comes in, she'll be above the background. There is currently no collidables on the screen. We'll add this in the future so that Lena can drop onto a platform. Fantastic. Hopefully she's going to be stopped by the bottom of the game screen. Create a new map in the tiled map editor. The map must be base 64 uncompressed. I'm going to set the tile size to 32 by 32 pixels. As previously mentioned, the tile set from Open Game Art 2D is actually 128 by 128 pixels. So I'm going to have to resize the tiles eventually. To get things started, I'm going to drop the entire background.png file onto the new tile set area. So this entire background image will become a tile set. This is not the best practice when creating maps. This is just so that we can focus a little bit quicker on the main points of the tutorial of Seaweed, which is the velocity and gravity. In the lower right hand panel, I'm going to select the entire map tile set and I'm going to use a stamp tool to stamp it onto the map. You could also draw the map on if you're having any problems like I am here. You can scroll it to line up the edges. Within tiled, name the tile map layer, base layer, and then we're gonna save the map into the assets slash tiles folder of your project. 
So this is within your flame game project. And there's a assets folder off of the main directory. And in there, create a new subfolder called tiles. And let's call our, our tile map map.tmx. Within the flame game system, we're going to add the new package flame underscore tiled. And that's going to link up the map.tmx file with the background.png file. This is a separate package from Flame, and you must add it independently of Flame. As previously mentioned, this tutorial does use Flame 1.1.1, which was just released in April of 2022. The collision system has changed. In this first step of using the map files that you produce with Tiled, we're going to have the exact same result as just loading in the background image independently. However, this will set us up to add additional components onto our map, such as the platforms or the places where the girl Lena will jump. Let's create a Tiled component variable called home map. And let's wait for it to load the tiled. Tiled component is from flame underscore tiled. And this must be imported into your project in order for you to use the tiled component dot load method. Tiled component dot load requires two parameters. The first one is the tile set. Uh, so in this case, we're just using the background image as the tile set. The second one is the size of each tile, which we're going to specify as 32 by 32 pixels. Add the home map to your game to get it to appear. Prior to running your game, we're going to have to edit the pubspec.yaml file. We've added a new subdirectory to the assets folder called tiles. And we must specify this inside of the pubspec.yaml file. Comment out the sprite component technique of adding the background graphic so that we can focus in on the map file. Re recall that the map file will be used in the future to add some additional complexity, additional components onto it. This is why we are going through this step right now. Add the subfolder tiles to your assets and let's test it out it's working fantastic next step will be to add some platforms uh, to this we'll have to use a different tile set for that because we'll be working with other objects within the map, I think I'm going to bring it up outside of the onload method in case we want to access any of the properties in the future from other methods within the flame game system. So let's just go above the onload method and create a late variable, which we're going to then instantiate within the onload method. In the next video, We'll start working on adding additional objects such as the platform and other things within our game for Lina to interact with. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.